I have been really determined to make a bra that lifts the ladies and makes them look amazing. And I think I've actually finally have gotten there. So let me share with you my bra making journey. I'm Madi with Madi Sews and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about lifting the ladies and my journey through this entire bra world. So if that doesn't sound like something you're interested in or it's not up your alley, no problem, thanks for joining. I'll see you next week. But if you are interested in knowing about what I've gone through and my thoughts on the whole process, stick with me. First, I'd like to quickly ask that if you've been enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. I try to post one or two times a week and when you subscribe, it'll let you know when a new video posts. So look, I have landed on I think my dream bra. Um, this is the Marlboro bra. And I'm in love. But before I get into the details about this and the shenanigans that go along with that, let me talk to you a little bit about my bra making journey. Bra making was nowhere on my radar. In fact, I didn't even consider making a bra until I had made a pair of stride tights by Green Style Creations and had enough material left over to make a matching bra. And that's when I started kind of thinking about how my bras really kind of don't fit me at all. So I went in with a simplicity pattern and I'll pop a link here to the video on this but I went ahead and I made this bra and it matches my tights perfectly. I feel like a freaking rock star in it. Because this one went so well, I ended up with this bra. Quite honestly, I love these bras and I wear them as much as I can. After I made those two bras, I attended the Great Bra Sewing Bee and this is like this bra conference and that's where, you know, everyone is talking about bralettes and bra making. They're giving you tips and all of this great stuff, all of these great ideas, really. And I was inspired to make myself a bralette. When I was in Madeline Intimate's class and she was talking about the Maris bra, I thought, ooh, that is one hot looking bra. I'm going to try to make it, especially because like she was talking about how women with larger chests can indeed wear bralette. Well, although that may be true, I don't think that's true for me quite yet. Or at least, it, I, I don't know, it probably could be if I made a bunch of iterations of this bra. But I don't, I don't think that's where I'm heading at this point in my bra journey. <laughs> but this is my Maris bra. Isn't that just the cutest thing? The, the Maris bralette to me was such a disappointment and I think it's because I had such high hopes for it and in my mind I hadn't sewn something in years really that I just couldn't wear out and so to have a project that kind of failed on that level was it was a real blow to the ego real like it hurt my feelings <laughs> it hurt my it did it hurt my feelings but <laughs> what what it also did was it got me thinking about how I really need a bra that's going to provide the support and shaping that I need and would like you know like look Let's be for real. I want to wear bras that are cute and make the girls look perky. Let's like perk up the ladies, right? Let's like boop, boop, like forward and up and make them look great. I don't want to sit around here walking around in my great grandma's bra. That's, look, that's not cute. Let's do something about it. So I did. After talking with a friend, she told me that she was going to be co-teaching a bra making class. And so I asked her for the details. She sent them over to me and I signed up. <laughs> Did not waste time, especially because it was a bra that I had seen and a lot of people had spoken about in the um, bra conference that I had went to. 
and I knew that it was designed in a way to kind of like push your your breast tissue it was designed to push the boobs forward and up all for that okay so this is my Marlboro bra um, and let me tell you I love this thing I feel like I finally gotten it to where I want it to be but let me let me share with you the process that I went through um, because true to form comedy ensued <laughs> Let me just start with saying that I'm really happy that I had decided to join this bra making workshop because I felt 100% overwhelmed just looking at the instructions and trying to figure out where I needed to start. Uh, for the Marlboro bra, when I read through the directions, the way they have you measure yourself is you measure your rib cage, you add so many inches to that, and then you subtract the full bust measurement, however many inches there is of a difference there, will determine your cup size. And according to those measurements, it put me in at a 40D, I believe. And when I cut out that pattern piece, it just, I knew it wasn't going to fit. The cup size was just way too small and the band was really big. And to give you an idea, my ready to wear size, the size that I have been wearing, not that it's necessarily the best, but I've been wearing a 34F. And so it just, to me, like it just, it didn't make, it didn't make much sense. Instead of cutting the 40D, I went in and I cut a 40G. And <laughs> it was just gigantic. I didn't even bother like putting on the findings or anything like that. It was just, way too big. I did bring up the sizing issue in my workshop and they had recommended that I start with an underwire that I felt fit properly and I, and I had one and find out what size that is by comparing it to charts and then you go back and you choose a band size on that. So after I did all of that I landed with the 36i and to be honest this thing fits. Um, it was a little looser than what I would typically like to wear, but it was good. And uh, since the band was at a place that I liked, I went ahead and I made a cup to go with it. So I made the 36i cup, I basted it in, and it was just, it was really big. I did go in and pan out some of the excess, like right here. You can see where, the mark, where I marked the lines. That was all excess to be pinned out, as well as removing this on the side. The bottom cut fit well. It was the upper portion that was just too big. And after discussing it with the instructors, they had said that really changing, doing alterations like that to the cup is the last thing that you want to do because if I go down a size, I might find that it lifts and shapes me better than what altering this would be. <laughs> and they were 100% spot on. I did end up going back in and making another band that was just shorter. So I did make the 34i band, but this time I made 34i cups to go with it to see if perhaps that would be the smaller cup size that I needed. Turns out it was just way too small overall. The smaller band plus smaller cup size equals no bueno. But because the band fits so well, I kept that and I just went in and attached my 34Js. Now this looks super raggedy because it's been washed a million times. When I based in the cups, I based it in with a dissolving thread. And, <laughs> and so I just pop it into the wash. I, I hate unpicking stitches. I just, I don't like it. So instead of, so instead of pulling out the seam ripper, I use that thread, I threw it in the wash and it pretty much annihilated my tester. But that's okay because this is a tester. What I did find was that my 34J cups fit perfectly. They gave me the perfect lift I wanted. I was good to go. I'm so ready to make my bra. <sighs> okay, so with this bra, this really came together really well. I got a um, kit from Emerald Erin. So this, 
this whole thing is her kit, the findings, everything. Um, I went in, cut up all the fabric, determined how I wanted it all laid out. That was really the fun part. I love that. I love kind of like moving pattern pieces around to see like, okay, where do I want the polka dots to be? <laughs> it's fun. Trust me, it's fun. <laughs> after I cut out those, after I cut out all the pieces, I just went for it. And so I made a fully lined bra. I put the band together. I dropped in the cups. Really, it, started, it came together so quickly. And then when it came to this bottom band here where you attach the elastic down here, <laughs> I went into my little like, you know, little packet that I received from Emerald Erin. I pulled out my three quarter inch elastic and in my mind, I heard them saying the soft side goes against your skin. Side. Okay, soft side against skin, soft side against skin, soft side against skin. But this elastic didn't have a soft side. It had a shiny side and a dull side. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna put the pretty side against my skin because the other side's gonna go against the fabric and you're never gonna see it. <laughs> I went in, I attached it to the bottom. It looked immaculate. I flipped it inside, I stitched it again. It was like, Oh, it was so in there. And then I realized I had stitched my strap, my bra strap to the bottom of my bra. <laughs> like novice problems, okay? I'm a beginner. I'm a beginner bra making person. Like hang with me. So, <laughs> so I had to go back in and unpick all of that because you know I wasn't basting that in. No dissolvable thread this time. <laughs> okay, so I got it off my bra, cleaned up all those little extra threads. I went and I got the Pico elastic, which is this really cute, you know, like you can see all the little lumpy things right there. Yeah, that that's what I was supposed to use. I also attached all the, um, you know, the other elastic around where it needed to be, but now, I'm at the strap portion. I had cut this damn elastic too short. It was just too short now. So I didn't have enough for my straps. Dilemma. <laughs> and if you've been following me for any amount of time, I'm all about making stuff work for you. Like, you got a problem? Figure it out. Get creative. <laughs> so I went ahead and I attached the one band um, but instead of putting it through a slider and using up all of that illustri that extra strap elastic, I just went ahead and set it to where I knew I wanted it to be and I secured it in. So there's no slider on this one. I still didn't fix my problem though because I, it was still too short on the other side to do that. So <laughs> what I did was I attached the strap elastic here but then towards the back, I went ahead and snipped it and put a new piece there. So you can see I zigzagged them together right over that seam. And it's in the back, so you really can't see it. I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. I wish it wasn't like that, but you know, I'm still loving this bra and I'm still gonna wear it all the time because it's the best, it's the best freaking bra I have in my drawer. Hands down, I love this thing. And I'd put it on and show it to you guys and walk around, but it, it's sheer. I ain't doing that here. Okay, so that's my Marlboro bra. I'll put um, links in the description box for the workshop that I took, all of that good stuff, the fabric, all of that good stuff. But I'm really curious to know if you've been making bras. I mean, it's Braugust, Braugust, Braugust. And I'm sure some of you guys are making amazing things. And if you have found a pattern that you feel I would like, pop it in the um, comments below and I'll definitely check it out. I'm feeling super brave at this moment. Like I wanna take on the world and these bras are giving me new life. <laughs> well, if you're still hanging with me after all of this boob talk, thanks. <laughs> thanks for joining me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Until next time, have a good day. Bye.